Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, now I'm going to ask uh, uh, Carl White to join us to offer some closing thoughts on the first day. Uh, students, if you just wouldn't mind if, just staying put for now, um, we're, we're going to, uh, after Carl speaks, we'll, we'll wrap the conference. Um, but, uh, but again, so uh, Carl White is the uh, Senior Vice President of Banking Supervision here at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis and has been involved um, with this conference really since the beginning. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Carl White. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so first, I'd like to just echo uh, several comments from my colleagues today and, and welcome you to the St. Louis Reserve Bank. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention St. Louis is the home of the National League Central Division champion St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> I'm sure you stayed up and watched it last night, as I was. Um, but um, no, uh, selfishly, I also would like to thank everyone involved in, in putting this together here in St. Louis from law enforcement to support services, catering, our AV team, but more specifically, Jim and, and, and his team, um, my staff have worked um, endless hours uh, putting this conference together. You think a in-person conference is tough? Try to put an in-person and hybrid conference together changes were happening literally all the way up until this morning. So just a big thanks to them. So before we adjourn for the day, I, I, I would like to share a few comments kind of from my own, from the perspective of, of someone who's been a bank regulator for uh, 35 years. Um, it seems like over those years, I've learned something new about community banks uh, and the community bank industry uh, almost every day, especially over the last two or, two or three years. Uh, today is certainly no exception. Uh, from the insightful research to the national survey put, put on by the Conference of, of State Bank Supervisors to comments shared by my fellow regulators from our bankers and, and obviously our researchers as well. Um, I'm very happy to say we're all gathered in person this year after two years being virtual. Um, I, I echo acting FDIC uh, Chair uh, Chairman Grunberg's enthusiasm about the benefits of being able to engage, debate, uh, and meet in person, there, there's, it's just invaluable, and I hope our students don't forget that. Um, but I'm also glad that we've we have had the technology to, to have our virtual audience participate uh, as well, literally from, from all over the world. Um, the changing nature of banking competition has been somewhat of a common theme today, so I'll focus some of my comments on that. Um, earlier, uh, President Bullard uh, noted in his opening remarks that competitions played a a prominent role in each of the nine previous, previous conferences, and, and the national surveys ha, have been a big part of that as well. For instance, responses to questions over the years have shown marked increases in perceived competition from the farm credit system and credit unions. FinTech is certainly another more recent example. The percentage of bankers who named lenders in a category including FinTech companies as their greatest source of competition for consumer lending rose from 2% to 19% this year. FinTech, on the other hand, can be seen as a friend as well as a foe, as just shown by, by our students from James Madison University. Uh, their winning case study, and I quote, foresees FinTech partnerships as key to remaining competitive, unquote. I note that such partnerships are certainly gonna be a topic of, of discussion tomorrow with our panel. Uh, two research papers presented today also dealt with competition. One of them by Zheng Li shows how widespread the effects of changes in competition can be. He showed that more competition increases the quant quality and quantity of services provided to all borrowers, but particularly minority borrowers. Another paper by Greg Weitzner shows how hard it is to understand potential impacts of changes in competition. As Governor Bowman pointed out in her speech, the number of commercial banks declined from about 5,900 in 2012 to less than 4,800 today. Conventional wisdom would suggest that such a reduction would reduce competition and lead to higher interest rates on loans, for example. But Greg's paper finds the opposite. Interest rates on loans charged by banks increase with the number of banks operating in a particular geographic market. More competition, higher rates, less competition, lower rates. This unexpected outcome reminds me that in the early days of the conference, burdensome mortgage regulations were a hot topic. And many bankers surveyed back in 2016 said they planned on leaving the mortgage market. But industry-wide mortgage lending by community banks didn't decline, at least not until last year, 
well after banks had learned to live with the mortgage regulations. In finishing up, I'd like to acknowledge what President George uh, of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City described as the shared entrance, interest of the Conference of State Bank Supervisors, the Fed, and the FDIC in financial stability. As she said, a cooperative environment across state and federal regulatory agencies is foundational in achieving a safe and sound financial system. I think that the proceedings today moved us closer towards that goal. Before we close the conference for the day, I'd like to remind everyone that we will resume tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll hear from our third keynote speaker of the conference, community banker Clayton Legere, president and CEO of Merchants and Marine Bank in Pascagoula, Mississippi. We'll also discuss research from our third research session, Transparency in Supervision and Regulation. We will hear from an expert panel on the topic of technology and relationship lending. And we'll hear once again from Commissioner Lisa Cruz, who will offer her thoughts on the two days of the conference. She will also announce the winner of the 2022 John W. Ryan Award for the research paper that the conference committee believes made the most significant contribution to banking research. As many have noted today, John Ryan was a driving force behind this conference. His passion and commitment to this work was evident in everything he did. To close out today, we've put together a short video that I think exemplifies John's energy and insights since he helped launch this com conference back in 2013. And it is my pleasure to first introduce John Ryan of the Conference of State Bank Supervisors. Thank you, Julie, and it's really a pleasure to be here today and to see this event come together. It's something that uh, Julie and I have talked about for a long time. The future of community banking is not just about the future of community banks, but the ability of communities to define their own future. It is about the future of rural America. It is about the future of small businesses. It is about the future of individual choice. I hear the frustrations and bankers want a banking system and a regulatory system that works for both of us and our needs. But I believe that what we're doing um, uh, in better understanding some of those issues and risks uh, will be in the interest of everyone. The future is going to require embracing change, uh, but also change on all of our parts, change on the part of regulators to focus on how we sustain I believe need to continue to sustain a diversity of institutions and the flexibility of financial institutions to embrace uh, the kind of change that uh, those of you who are bankers in the room are gonna confront. I would say one of the most significant contributions of this conference is the role that community banks and the diversity of our financial system play in our small business lending ecosystem. Our financial institutions are solving complex, important problems in society and our local communities. And that commitment to local and the aggregate of that impact, that local impact across the country, is very significant. This research is important. It puts facts and figures on community banking that informs policy. All of your work and your participation, whether you're a researcher, a community banker, a student, a regulator, what you're doing and coming together is unique and it makes a difference. And I think it makes for better public policy, policy that's essential to how our economy functions, how our democracy functions.